The lymphatic system is a secondary circulatory system comprised of a complex network of lymphatic channels, capillaries, nodes, plexes, tissues, and organs. The system serves to maintain homeostasis, support the immune response, and improve fluid balance. It also collects and filters fluid and proteins from interstitial tissues and absorbs and transports nutrients. Lymphatic and venous flow is dependent on local mechanical and fluid forces, as well as pressure differentials generated by muscular and diaphragmatic activity throughout the body. Large lymph vessels contain an intrinsic pump in the form of lymphangians, which are under autonomic control and produce a peristaltic wave. A larger amplitude mechanical pumping is induced by muscle pumps, intrinsic visceral motion, and the rhythmic nature of respiration. Breathing generates a pumping action as lymph and venous blood are drawn into the negatively pressured thoracic cavity from the positively pressured abdominal cavity during inhalation. Somatic dysfunction may impede lymphatic flow via fascial compression of lymphatic vessels, increased impedance in the thoracic inlet region, and increased sympathetic tone, which can alter peristalsis and valve motion. Lymphatic pump techniques, such as the thoracic and pedal pump, can be utilized to enhance the body's inherent physiologic pumping action. These pumping techniques have been demonstrated to increase lymphatic flow in the thoracic duct, increase absorption of antigens, boost antibody responses to vaccines, and significantly increase secretory IgA. Lymphatic pump techniques have also been shown to increase leukocyte count and leukocyte mobilization from gut-associated lymphoid tissue and to mobilize inflammatory mediators. Patients treated with the thoracic lymphatic pump after cholecystectomy were found to have an earlier recovery and a faster improvement of force vital capacity than those treated with incentive spirometry. Lymphatic pump techniques are generally well tolerated. However, there are a few absolute contraindications, including anuria and necrotizing fasciitis. Relative contraindications that need to be considered include treatment localized over an area of cancer, fracture or active infection, overwhelming bacterial or chronic infections, coagulopathies and unstable congestive heart failure, among others. It is important to ensure that proximal lymphatic channels are opened before performing these techniques. We will begin by demonstrating the classic thoracic pump technique, though there are variants utilizing activation. This technique may be performed if there are clinical signs of edema, lymphatic congestion, or somatic dysfunction related to lymphatic structures. This technique should not be performed in areas of rib fractures, surgical sites, infection, tumor, or central venous lines. Begin by having the patient lying supine with their head turned to one side while the physician stands at the head of the table. If a female patient, ask them to cover their own breast tissue with their hands. Then place the palms of both hands on the patient's anterior upper thoracic region with fingers spread and pointed laterally on the patient's chest. The thenar and hypothenar eminences should contact just below the patient's clavicles on ribs two through four. Instruct the patient to take a deep inhalation and then fully exhale. During exhalation, gently add a compressive force in a posterior and inferior direction and rhythmically pump the costal cage at a rate of approximately 120 beats per minute for several minutes and according to patient tolerance. The patient should continue to breathe at a normal rate during this time. The second technique we will demonstrate is the pedal pump. This technique may be performed if there are clinical signs of edema or lymphatic congestion, including lower extremity edema and cellulitis, and should be avoided in patients with deep vein thrombosis of the lower extremity or an acute lower extremity fracture. Begin with the patient lying supine on the table while the physician stands at the foot of the table. Start by placing the palms of each hand over the metatarsal heads on the plantar surface of the patient's feet and dorsiflex them to their physiologic barriers. Then apply a low velocity, moderate amplitude springing force in a cephalad direction to hyperdorsiflex the feet and send a wave of motion toward the patient's head. Allow the motion wave to rebound caudally. As the rebound wave returns to the patient's feet, induce a subsequent wave of motion cephalad by dorsiflexing the feet once again. The repetition rate of the springing is varied but may be done at a rate of 120 per minute for approximately two minutes. 
This treatment can also be done with feet in plantar flexion. If done in plantar flexion, a pumping motion is induced by contacting the dorsal side of the foot and pumping with a posterior inferior force.